Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and today we are going to get into our scoring system. I've uh, had a couple of you mention in the comments that uh, it would be nice to update that system so that we're not just scoring 10 uh, points on every pellet, even if they're energizers, and 200 points on every ghost, even if we've consumed more than one during one frightened mode round. Okay, so the way that this is gonna work is that the pellets are still gonna equal 10, okay? But when we get to the energizer pellets, we're going to make those equal 50, right? So that every time the Pac-Man consumes an energizer pellet, we have 50 points. With the ghosts, what we're going to do is that once Pac-Man actually consumes an energizer pellet, we uh, start what's known as frightened mode. So the ghosts turn blue, and they stay blue for a specified amount of time. So the the idea here is, is that if we can capture more than one ghost, the amount of points that we should receive for capturing ghosts should double. So on the first ghost we get 200 points, the second ghost we're going to get 400 points, the third ghost we're going to get 800, and the fourth ghost we'll get 1600. Okay? So, and you have this opportunity every time you eat an energizer pellet, that resets so you start back over at 200, then 400, then 800, and 1600. If you can do that four times within that level, okay, you should be able to get 64,000 points, no, 6,400 points, <laughs> 6,400 points by consuming all the ghosts during frightened mode, okay, that's, that's just the ghosts alone, is that right? 200, then 400, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing the math right on it, 200 plus 400 is actually 600, plus 800 is 1,400, plus 1,600 is... Um, to 3,000, okay? So eating four times that amount would give you 12,000 points, right? So we've got 12,000 points just for eating all of the ghosts for every Energizer pellet consumed for one level, okay? That's, that's pretty good. Um, we also are going to get into not this tutorial, but the next one, we're going to add in the fruits that are going to show up on a level. The reason that I'm not doing it on this one is because I don't want it to get too long because what we'll have to do is we'll have to import new graphics and then we're gonna have to add um, quite a bit of code to randomize that effect and um, you know get all into that. But uh, like I said, that's for the next tutorial. For this tutorial, all we're gonna do is the energizer pellets and the ghosts. So let's get right down to it. What we'll do is we will open up our, um, our ghost script Actually, let's start with a game board script because we're going to create a variable. All right, and we're going to, let's create it right under here. We're going to make it a static variable so that we can access it from other classes. And it's going to be public, of course. And we're going to um, make this variable. We're going to call it ghost consumed running score. Okay. We're not going to set it equal to anything just yet. We're just going to call it that. All right. So the other thing we've got to do is we've got to go into this method here. It's the start start consumed. Okay. Because the start consumed method is responsible for um, showing that text on the screen. If you'll remember that when a ghost is consumed, it shows that. 200 on the screen and that happens right here consume ghost score text dot get component text dot enabled equals true so right before we set that to true what we want to do is we want to set that text to be something other than just 200 all the time we want to set it dynamically so what we're going to do is we're going to say consumed uh, consumed ghost score text dot text equals and we're going to use the new variable that we just created um, consumed no what do we call it I don't even remember ghost consumed ghost consumed running score and we're going to do dot to string which is a method that we can use to turn our integers into strings which is pretty helpful because the text property of our uh, game object here only takes a string type to um, assign that to the text property. So we will use the toString method to convert our integer to a string. Okay. 
So that'll what that'll do is that'll update our text so that when this gets enabled, our text is going to reflect what the actual score is that we're going to assign or add to the player. Okay. So we'll save that because we won't need to go in there anymore. Now we'll go to the uh, ghost class. All right. And we're going to make a modification in the consumed method. So we're going to search for that. All right, consumed, which is right here. So right now, um, what we're doing is we are checking to see if it's a one-player game. If it is, then we're going to increase the player one score by 200. Well, we don't want to do that. We want to increase the player one score by game board dot ghost consumed running score. Okay. And the same thing here, if game board dot is player one up, okay, if, if it's not a player one game, we've got a two player game. So then we've got to deal with whether or not to assign the score to player one or to player two. So we'll just do the same thing here. We're gonna say game board dot ghost consumed running score and game board dot ghost consumed running score. So right now, <laughs> Game board dot ghost consume running score. The ghost consume running score variable right now is still just equal to zero. So what we're doing is we're just incrementing the player score by zero. Well, that's not very helpful. So what we want to do is after, um, yeah, after we actually start the consumed method, we want to update our ghost consume running score. So we're gonna do game board dot ghost consumed running score equals game board dot ghost consumed running score times two. So basically what we're doing here is we're gonna start out with a ghost consumed running score of 200 and I'm gonna show you where we're gonna set that here in a minute but just let's pretend that we start out with 200. Okay, so 200 is incremented the first time on the player score and then we start our consume method, which our start consume method in the game board then says, okay, well, it's 200, so we're gonna display 200. All right, so then the next time a ghost is consumed, it's going to say, okay, well, um, we're going to, actually, before the next time a ghost is consumed, after we flash the 200 across the screen, we then come in here and we say, okay, well, 200 times two equals 400, so now we're going to set ghost consumed running score equal to 400. So now with the score equal to 400, we're going to, when, once we consume the next ghost, our player score is going to increment by 400 because that's what this equals now. And then we display 400 on the screen. And then again, we're gonna go in and we're gonna update our running score. And our running score is going to be times two of what it's currently at. So 400 times two is 800. And then we take it, we say 800, and we say, okay, well, Pac-Man consumed another ghost, we increment by 800, then we flash 800 across the screen, then we update it a final time, which is 800 times two equals 1600. Then if Pac-Man consumes another ghost at the current running score, 1600 will be incremented to his score, all right? So where do we initially set the ghost running score to be 200? All right, well, the logical place to put it would be two right here when we start frightened mode because if we go in here and say game board dot ghost consumed running score equals 200 that means that every time frightened mode is started the running score is reset to our original score of 200. Um, now if you want to mess with this if you want to change it to a different value other than 200 because you know 200 is the original score that they use in pac-man but it would be easy if you would just create a public variable on the ghost class and then you can set on the ghost class you can set what this number should be and then you can just assign this variable that way if you want to change the score later on you can just adjust the variable and you don't have to worry about trying to find this in this method either way this will work just fine gameboard.ghostconsumed running score equals 200 is what we're going to start with and that's going to kick it off all right so let's try that out 
And realize I haven't done the uh, Energizer pellets yet. Alright, so I'm gonna do my best here to try and capture all four ghosts. I may not be able to. I just don't know if I am that good. Come on. Alright, there we go, we got 800. I'm never gonna catch the last one at this rate. Alright. Come closer, ghosts. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Anyways, um, I am not going to sit here and try to get all four ghosts, because I just don't think that I am that good at Pac-Man, and I don't want to waste your time either. So, uh, trust me, this should work. <laughs> so, uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is go into the Pac-Man script, and we want to change the um, amount of points that we get for Energizer pellets. So if we'll scroll down all the way to um, here, okay, in this consume pellet method, we've got if game board is player one up, otherwise we assign it to player two. Here's where we assign the score, and we're already doing an if statement here, if tile is pellet or is tile, or, uh, tile is super pellet. So what we'll do is right before here, We'll do an if statement. We'll say if pile dot is super pellet, then game board dot player one score plus equals fifty. Otherwise, we assign ten, and it's that simple. Okay, and then we increment a player one pellets consumed. So. If it's a super pellet or energizer pellet, um, then we increment the score by 50. Otherwise, we increment the score by 10. All right, so now we've got to come down here and do this the same thing for player two. So I'll do if pile dot is super pellet, then game board dot player two score plus equals 50, else. All right, and that's it. So now every time uh, Pac-Man consumes a Energizer pellet, he's going to get 50 points instead of 10 for those. So, um, and you know, one thing I forgot to mention, and I may have mentioned this before, and if you're not aware of it, what I'm doing here is I'm writing a shorthand if statement, if else statement. So there are a couple of different ways that you can write if else statements. Um, and this is the shorthand way of doing it, or one of the shorthand ways of doing it. Um, what you can do here is instead of adding open curly brackets, closing curly brackets, closing curly, open curly brackets, closing curly brackets, you can leave those out altogether as long as you only have one line. Okay. So if you've got one line in the if statement or the else statement, then you can do this shorthand where you don't have to waste space with curly brackets. So. A lot of times I'll implement it this way because it's just, it, it leaves so much more room for other, well, you have like an infinite number of room, uh, an infinite number of room, an infinite amount of room uh, to write your code in. But I think this is just a little more, um, it just looks nicer to write it this way. Anyways, let's go into uh, Unity real quick and uh, check out our pellets and see if they really give us 50 extra points. And we got 190, so we should get 250. There we go, yep, we got 250. All right, I am gonna go. I'm gonna try to get all four of these ghosts. What? Come on, ghosts, follow me. Four. Eight. Ah, sixteen hundred! Yay! I did it! 
Can I do it again, though? Two hundred. Four hundred. Eight hundred. Ah. <laughs> oh, sad death. And this is like this because I started the game in, uh, without going through the menu first, so it doesn't know first player, second player, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so that's it for this video. Um, I kept it short for you guys so that you can add some more cool things to your Pac-Man game and not waste too much time doing it. And uh, next week, I'll be back with uh, adding the fruits to the Pac-Man game. So until next time, uh, thanks again for watching. And uh, oh, um, I'd like to do a shout out for um, Mark. And uh, <laughs> again, thank you, Mark, for continuing to support me on Patreon. I appreciate it. To the rest of you, thanks for watching, and I will see you next week.